welcome to Pokey National. My name is Professor Ginkgo, and today we'll be looking at a myriad of different Pokemon species and types to learn a bit more about the world around us. Deep within the heart of the Hoenn region lies Route 117, a serene and secluded road off the beaten path from New Mauville. This unassuming trail leads to a place of wonder and tranquility, the Pokemon Daycare. This haven is not merely a sanctuary for play and grazing, but a vital refuge for preserving Pokemon species with dwindling populations. The skilled staff at this particular farm possess a special expertise in the art of breeding and nurturing Torchic, the fire-type starter choice for Hoenn region trainers. Torchic, also known as the Chick Pokemon, is a fascinating creature. With its unique flame sac inside its belly, it can produce flames that burn continuously and reach temperatures of up to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. This fiery ability serves as both a means of defense and a tool for survival in the wild. In the wild, Torchics are known to be feisty creatures, often engaging in battles with one another. Their bright orange plumage intentionally attracts the aggression of other Pokémon, reflecting their competitive nature. However, in this daycare, Torchics are raised to be more calm and amiable compared to their wild counterparts. Despite their innate combativeness, Torchics have a heartwarming trait. When hugged, they emit a toasty warmth, endearing themselves to their trainers. However, their aversion to darkness due to limited visibility highlights their vulnerability in certain environments. Outside of the daycare, Torchics tend to stick close to their trainers, following behind with unsteady steps. This behavior reflects their reliance on human guidance for protection and support. Overall, Torchic presents a captivating blend of fiery resilience and endearing vulnerability, making it a creature we want to preserve at all costs. The Starter Pokémon The choice of a fire, water, or grass-type Pokémon at the beginning of every trainer's journey. Each starter Pokémon is rare and unique in its own way. However, one starter Pokémon has risen to the point of popularity that surpasses its unique attributes. This Pokémon is the Cantonian Fire-type starter, Charmander, the Lizard Pokémon. Like most starters, Charmander and its subsequent evolutions, Charmeleon and Charizard, are very rare to find. However, Charmander's uniqueness goes far past its status as a starter Pokémon. For example, the flame on its tail indicates Charmander's life force. If Charmander is healthy, the flame will burn bright. However, if Charmander is sick or getting closer to death, the flame will start to sputter out. A Charmander will dedicate its life to protecting the flame on its tail. However, this flame is also Charmander's source of power. This fire is what allows Charmander to learn strong moves at early ages, such as Ember and Smokescreen. It's because of this early access to strong moves and its veracity on the battlefield that Charmander was chosen to be a starter Pokemon. Many young trainers have a tendency to confuse Charmander with a dragon type, despite the fact that it evolves into a fire flying type. This confusion is understandable because Charmander has access to moves like Dragon Breath and Dragon Tail. In fact, it is theorized that in the past, Charmander was a dragon type. However, its evolution changed its typing over time. Even with that change, it still retains some of its dragon-like appearances and moves. Charmander is a fascinatingly unique Pokémon, and if you're a new trainer, then we can guarantee you that Charmander will be one of the greatest partners you will ever have. Welcome to the mesmerizing Marsh of Paldea, where we'll embark on an enthralling journey exploring the captivating phenomena of regional forms. As we delve deeper, we discover how a single Pokémon can transform and adapt based on its region of origin. This phenomenon can be found within the intriguing case of Wooper, a ground and water type Pokémon hailing from the Johto region. Renowned for its adorable smile, beautiful blue and pink coloring, and soulless, unfeeling eyes, Wooper has captured the hearts of many. 
However, in the distant land of Paldea, Wooper takes on a drastically different appearance. In Paldea, Wooper has evolved to spend more of its life on land compared to its blue counterparts. This new lifestyle has bestowed upon it the ability to produce a toxic layer of skin used to ward off predators. Wooper's coloring has also changed to match that of the mud and ground it walks upon, again in service to its survival. While these differences certainly separate Paldean and Jotonian Wooper's lifestyles, it doesn't mean the Woopers have nothing in common. Every kind of Wooper has a reputation for being a dull-witted Pokemon that remains oblivious to its surroundings. They will frequently stare blankly at other people and Pokemon purely for entertainment purposes. Despite their dull-wittedness, Woopers are undoubtedly friendly Pokemon, known to roam in packs with like-minded creatures such as Dunsparce and Shroomish. This creature's fascinating evolution is a testament to the intricacies of the Pokemon world, where even the simplest creatures can hold the most wondrous secrets. That's all we have for you today. My name is Professor Ginkgo, and we hope to see you again on Poke National. Magnificent marine reptile, Lapras. Also known as the transport Pokemon, watch as this water and ice type elegantly traverses the water, passing its fellow Pokemon on its thrilling journey homeward. Female Lapras like this one display remarkable strength, capable of traversing hundreds of nautical miles in a single sitting. Known for their amiable nature, Lapras frequently lend a helping hand in transporting items and trainers across perilous waters. This Lapras, however, is traveling alone and has far more distance to get through as it makes its way towards the Orange Islands, where an enchanting new chapter of its life eagerly awaits. The babies have been born. Thankfully, father has been there to watch over them and raise them while mother was out. However, due to Lapras's dwindling population caused by the intense hunting of the species, male Lapras have become very territorial when it comes to their young and it has become best practice to keep your distance. But even from far away, one can see the baby Lapras as they begin to awake. When born, baby Lapras measured to be around 8 inches long, weighing around 10 pounds. Over the span of only 15 years, these creatures can grow to be over 8 feet long and weigh nearly 500 pounds. It is only in their adult years when they learn how to swim, so for now, the baby Lapras stay on land, bathing in the sun. The most notable aspect of the species is Lapras' voice. No matter the age, Lapras has frequently been recorded singing a melodic tune that works as a form of communication for the entire Lapras family. If you ever get the chance to be near a family of Lapras, stop and try to listen for their song as they call out for their mother who is on her way home. The scenic oceans of Alola. Here is where water types of all forms come together in their magnificence. However, there is one water type Pokemon that is so empty headed and useless that many akin its nature closer to that of a plant than any grass type Pokemon out there. I'm of course talking about the inexcusable, bumbling waste of a water type, Magikarp, the fish Pokemon. An underpowered, pathetic Pokemon. It has been known to jump high on occasion, but never more than seven feet. It is known as virtually worthless and one of the most pathetic Pokemon to ever exist. In terms of both power and speed, it is known for being very unreliable. In the distant past, it was remarkably stronger than the horribly weak descendants of today. There is truly no other Pokemon on this planet as inane and useless as Magikarp.
Eevee has taken the world by storm with its cuteness and charm. This adorable creature has become a fan favorite among Pokemon trainers and researchers alike. But don't let its cute appearance fool you. Eevee is much more than just a fluffy face. Eevee is known as the evolution Pokemon thanks to its unique ability to evolve into eight different forms based on different evolutionary methods. You've probably heard of the Waterstone method that transforms Eevee into the majestic and aquatic Vaporeon. But there's so much more to this fascinating creature than meets the eye. So let's dive deeper into the lesser known secrets and intriguing facts of this lovable creature. Did you know that Vaporeon's long tail and dorsal fins have led many people to mistake it for a mermaid? The creature's affinity for damp environments such as swamps and marshes has also fueled stories of mythical beasts or monsters with the power to control rivers and streams. Did you also know that Vaporeon's unique adaptation allows it to blend seamlessly into its aquatic surroundings? Vaporeon's cell structure is oddly similar to that of water molecules, giving it the remarkable ability to become practically invisible while submerged. This evolutionary advantage enables Vaporeon to move undetected, making it an efficient predator and a formidable opponent in battle. Vaporeon's and the rest of Eevee's evolution's unique ability to adapt to their specific surroundings is a true marvel of nature, nearly perfected for survival. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of the natural world, we can't help but be amazed at how it equips creatures with the perfect tools to thrive in their respective environments. It is a testament to the incredible diversity and adaptability of life on our planet and a reminder of the beauty that surrounds us. Welcome back to Pokey National Geographic's first episode of 2024. My name is Professor Ginkgo, and today we're exploring the wondrous landscapes of Viridian Forest. Many young trainers tend to pass through the forest on distinctly marked paths. However, a majority of the forest's grand foliage is untouched by humans due to the incredible number of territorial beedrill that call this place home. Beedrill is a large bug and poison type Pokemon with two sets of wings, a large antenna for sensing their environment, and two massive compound eyes that give nearly 360 degree vision. This incredible sight aids Beedrill when navigating at high speeds because it allows them to easily search for food while avoiding predators like Pidgeot or Scyther. To defend themselves and their colonies from these threats, Beedrill are heavily armed with physical and chemical weaponry. Its large forelimbs have developed into cone-shaped stingers, paired with their own venom glands. These stingers are capable of delivering powerful poison-type attacks, like Poison Sting or Poison Jab, and its abdomen even features a third stinger should an attack come from behind. These venomous weapons, however, have an alternate use. Unlike its closely related cousin Combi, Beedrill doesn't subsist solely on nectar and honey, because this Pokemon is a predator. Beedrill preys on smaller bug-type Pokemon such as Caterpie or Venonat and uses its venom to incapacitate its prey. Afterwards, they bring their prize kill back to the colony for consumption and storage. The predation of leaf-eating bug-type Pokemon within its home range not only provide Beedrill with meals, but also transforms the forest it resides in by reducing consumption of nearby plants therefore leaving plenty left over for the next generation of Beedrill as they start their life as herbivorous weedles. Welcome to the Pot Bottom Desert within the Galar region. This desert is an enclosed area covered in sand and frequently buffeted by intense sandstorms. However, on some days, the desert calms, revealing itself to be the home of many spectacular Pokemon species. My name is Professor Ginkgo, and I'm a Pokemon researcher from the Unova region. I'm here today to give you an in-depth look at one of the world's most famous ground-type Pokemon. This is, of course, the mole Pokemon, Diglett. Diglett usually live about one yard underneath the sand dunes, where they feed on plant roots. They sometimes appear above ground to spend some time in the sun. 
However, their skin is very thin. If they are exposed to light for too long, their blood heats up, causing them to grow extremely weak. You might notice the small hairs on Diglett's body as well as how it wiggles around when above the ground. Diglett have far stronger senses than you or me, and it uses its motion combined with those hairs to be aware of its surroundings. This allows Diglett to quickly burrow underground if it senses danger. If you're ever in Unova and wish to stop by my home in Flachessie Town, you'll be able to see how local farmers work with Diglett in order to grow berries and crops. The reason this happens is because wherever this Pokemon burrows, the soil is left perfectly tilled for planting crops. This soil is made ideal for growing apricorns and allows local farmers to live harmoniously with the Diglett species they raise. Because of how Diglett keep a part of their body underground, it is still unknown what the rest of their body looks like. Their height is assumed to be 8 inches with a weight of 1.8 pounds, but this is highly speculated. However, something we do have confirmed is Diglett's method of evolution. You see, Diglett fits into the same evolutionary type that includes Magnemite and Doduo. Here you see how one Diglett seems to become three Diglett, but instead this process of reproduction leads to the creation of a new Pokemon known as Dugtrio. While not much is known about Dugtrio, its behavior is similar to that of Diglett and has been observed to almost be somehow of a hive mind connecting three Diglett together. While this information isn't fully confirmed, it is still being tested and researched to this very day. Many questions and only a few answers, but sadly that's all the time I have here today. I'm Professor Ginko, and we hope to see you again on Pokey National Geographic. Within the Hoenn region lies the small canyon desert of Route 111. This land is home to some of the driest and hottest landmarks on our planet, and is frequently unenterable due to its intense sandstorms. This desert holds many secrets of science and history hidden under miles of sedimentary rock, as well as many oddities milling about its surface. These oddities include Pokemon such as Baltoy, the clay doll Pokemon. Being a ground and psychic type, Baltoy moves by spinning around on its single foot like a top. Many Baltoy have even been seen spinning on their heads. Primitive wall paintings depicting this Pokemon living among humans have been found in ancient ruins in this very desert, confirming Baltoy's deep connections with people and culture. As soon as it spots others of its kind, Baltoy will quickly congregate and may begin crying in unison. Despite Baltoy's history with humans and society, it greatly prefers the company of its own, or even its evolved form, Claydol. In fact, groups of Baltoy will frequently look to Claydol as a sort of tribal leader within groups. Flying, digging, burrowing, and scavenging are the unique traits of the fascinating ground-type desert Pokemon, Sandshrew, the mouse Pokemon. Standing at a height of 2 feet and weighing on average 26 and a half pounds, this extraordinary creature is a living example of adaptation to its environment. Sporting almond-shaped eyes, a pointed snout, triangular ears, and a thick rock-like tail, Sandshrew's evolutionary advantages make it a formidable and cunning creature. The brick-patterned yellow hide of this bipedal folidite acts as a shield against harsh environments of the desert, allowing it to blend in seamlessly with the sandy terrain. Sandshrew's ability to dig deep burrows for shelter and roll its body to withstand attacks demonstrates its extraordinary survival instincts in the challenging desert environment. This resilient Pokemon typically makes its home in deserts and arid zones where rainfall is scarce, relying on its exceptional digging skills to catch bug-type Pokemon. Sandshrew has evolved to protect its soft underbelly by curling up into a ball when danger approaches. This ball transformation ability also allows it to traverse the expansive desert at high speeds, showing its deep connection to its environment as well as its agility. On the rare event that Sandshrew's skin gets wrinkled by moisture, you can commonly find it resting and drying itself off on hot rocks or even near volcanoes. 
The sand shrew's survival in the unforgiving desert landscape serves as proof of the toughness and ingenuity of the natural world. Static electricity is a remarkable natural phenomenon in which an electrical charge accumulates on the surface of objects, particularly in environments with low levels of moisture. This natural phenomenon is especially present in the dry air of deserts, making these regions particularly appealing to various electric-type Pokémon. Among the inhabitants of these charged environments, one can often encounter Magnemite, known as the Magnet Pokémon. Despite its modern robotic appearance, carvings discovered in the ruins of Alf suggest that Magnemite has a rich history going back almost 3,000 years. This hints at a long-standing presence in the region, sparking intrigue about its evolution and adaptation over time. Magnemite's distinctive features include a gray, spherical metal body adorned with blue and red-tipped horseshoe magnets on each side, as well as a single large eye. Its magnetic units produce an electromagnetic field granting it the ability to defy gravity and potentially interfere with electrical equipment. This field can be dangerous if not handled properly, as it can disrupt electronic devices and even cause power outages. Notably, the intensity of the magnetic fields generated by magnemite increases with the speed of rotation. While not inherently aggressive, wild magnemite may exhibit unpredictable behavior when approached by trainers, occasionally opting to flee rather than engage in interaction. An intriguing aspect of magnemite's existence lies in its unique method of communication with other electric-type Pokémon. These creatures have been observed utilizing electrical signals to convey complex emotions and thoughts. This communication method resembles bursts of electricity that function akin to radio waves, employing specific frequencies to convey intricate messages. This extraordinary form of communication not only sheds light on the fascinating and intricate world of electric-type Pokémon, but also underscores the depth of their interactions, a world that continues to amaze and captivate Pokémon enthusiasts. Within our world, there exists a rare and mystifying creature known as Lucario, the Aura Pokemon. Standing at a height of 3 foot 11 and weighing approximately 119 pounds, Lucario is a dual type fighting and steel Pokemon with a striking appearance. Its predominantly blue and black fur gives it a gallant and fierce look, completed by its sharp red eyes, long snout, and ears. What makes this canine-like Pokemon unique is its ability to emit energy waves and control them with remarkable precision to sense even the farthest of beings. This inherent power led to the naming of its ability as Aura. In the wild, Lucario can usually be found deep in mountains, living far from human settlements to hone their skills. They are exceptionally rare and have mastered the art of controlling their aura to the point where they can read the thoughts and movements of other beings. Through dedicated training, a Lucario can even read auras to understand the feelings of living beings from more than half a mile away. However, this ability has a downside, as it sometimes leads Lucario to learn information it would rather not know, causing it to have high levels of anxiety. While they are known for their pride and loyalty to their trainers, Lucario also possesses a strong sense of justice and will only place its trust in trainers with righteous hearts. Their ability to read auras allows them to assess their trainers and judge their worthiness. Lucario's unique abilities and captivating nature make it a beloved and intriguing creature in our world. Their loyalty, sense of justice, and remarkable aura reading skills make them not only powerful allies, but also fascinating companions. It's no wonder that Lucario has captured the hearts of Pokemon enthusiasts around the world. The Tag Tree Thicket at Night During the day, this forest within the Paldea region is teeming with life. However, as the natural world begins to slumber, we start to see the emergence of Pokémon that we would have never seen otherwise. The most apt example would be that of the disguised Pokémon, Mimikyu. A ghost and fairy type, this Pokémon lives in dark places untouched by sunlight. 
When it appears before humans, it hides itself in a cloth that resembles a Pikachu. To this day, its actual appearance is unknown. A scholar who once saw what was underneath the cloth was overcome with fear and died from the shock. However, it would be incorrect to perceive this Pokemon as hostile. Mimikyu is frequently a lonely Pokemon, and it conceals its terrifying appearance beneath a disguise. It does this in order to get closer to other people and Pokemon in hopes of befriending them. Many trainers in the modern day feel that Mimikyu's urge for companionship is similar to that of a human's, though others perceive its use of a Pikachu disguise to be dangerous trickery. The most fascinating thing about Mimikyu in its disguise is how it's used as a defense mechanism. If Mimikyu is attacked, the rag can act as a decoy, but this will commonly destroy the rag in the process. If Mimikyu's disguise is broken or its rag torn during an attack, it will try to fix it as if its life depended on it. It can truly make you wonder if Mimikyu is really the Pokemon underneath the hood or the image that Mimikyu wants us to see. Welcome to Duford, a charming waterfront town on a picturesque island southwest of the Hoenn region's mainland. Although the island's size may be modest, it boasts a highly esteemed excavation and tourist destination called Granite Cave, which is brimming with captivating ecosystems and fascinating Pokemon. Navigating through the dark, dank, and winding tunnels of Granite Cave can be a daunting task for most humans. However, if you work with a Pokemon that can use the move Flash, you will be able to reveal all the natural wonders that are hidden in the shadows. Let's try it now and see what we can find. In 3, 2, 1. Ah, well if it isn't the darkness Pokemon itself, Sableye. Sableye are known to inhibit the depths of caverns, living a rather uneventful existence. However, they are often feared due to the myth that unsuspecting individuals will have their souls taken when witnessing the glow of Sableye's crystal eyes. In reality, the truth behind the mesmerizing gaze of this Pokemon is far more intriguing. It's worth noting that Sableye possesses a unique and distinctive dietary preference subsisting solely on crystals. Over time, these Pokemon have developed fur-covered claws that enable them to excavate rocks and locate their sustenance. Interestingly, they also leverage these claws for more aggressive ways of gathering their required minerals. The Carbink never stood a chance. Because of this specific dietary habit, parts of Sableye's body have grown to mimic that of its diet. Although not actually crystals, Sableye's eyes imitate the visual properties of citrine and diamond to attract unsuspecting prey. This unique trait also grants Sableye the keen eye ability, enabling it to detect enemies in light levels significantly lower than most other cave-dwelling Pokémon. Sableye has gained a reputation as one of the most fearsome ghost-type Pokémon in existence, so we advise to clutch your pearls when in the presence of this elusive creature to avoid becoming its next target. In the northeastern corner of the Kanto region, amidst scenic landscapes, lies the tranquil yet enigmatic village of Lavender Town. One of its most striking features is the sprawling gravesite, a solemn and poignant tribute to the brave soldiers who fought and perished in the devastating Pokemon War. This sacred ground has become a haven for a multitude of ghoulish and ethereal Pokemon, many of them wrapped in eerie tales and haunting rumors that have draped the sacred site with an aura of mystery and allure. Ghastly, the mysterious ghost and poison-type Pokemon continues to intrigue trainers and researchers alike. With its body composed of 95% poisonous gas and the remaining 5% believed to be the remnants of departed souls, Ghastly stands out as a truly unique entity in the Pokemon world. Appearing as a black spherical Pokemon enveloped in a haunting purple haze and emitting a faint sweet smell, Ghastly possesses the toxic gas that can induce fainting and suffocation. Its ability to enshroud enemies regardless of size makes it a formidable battle opponent. Despite its mischievous and playful nature, Ghastly has a surprisingly woeful side to its personality. It has been observed to preserve and pass on the memories of departed humans. Some Ghastly have even been seen haunting specific ruins or buildings, guarding the memory of individuals they deeply cared for in the past. 
This unique connection to humans adds a layer of depth and mystery to Ghastly's character. However, it is crucial to understand that Ghastly is not a deceased Pokémon, but a unique spectral entity. Its classification as a ghost type is due to its extraordinary physiological abilities, which allow it to alter its form, create illusions, and even pass through solid objects. Of particular interest is Ghastly's capacity to manifest tangible appendages from its gaseous form. These remarkable abilities make Ghastly a fascinating subject for further exploration and study. So be cautious, for you never know where you might encounter a Ghastly in the wild. In fact, they could be lurking and listening right behind you. That's all we have for today's episode of Pokey National. My name is Professor Ginkgo, and we'll see you next time.